It's the day you've been waiting for. Maybe today is the day you get to go in to the school on that random summer morning. Or maybe today is the day you get to log in to your, your university's VLE and see. Or maybe today is the day that that letter is finally going to come through the post. The frustration of not knowing. The anxiety of what will happen next. The, the pause of every other element of life. But today is the day you find out what grade did you get. And then you see it. And the sheer relief is met now with only pure joy or maybe bitter disappointment in the grade or the, the number or letter you see before you. And the seeming definition it brings to who you are. But should a grade really tell you who you are? I'm Matt. I'm 36. I've been married to Joanna for 12 years, over 12 years, I should get that right. Uh, I have a four-year-old daughter, River, and a seven-year-old husky, Tacoma. I've been involved in professional music all around the globe since I was about eight years old, but the last six or seven years, I've been involved in creating, managing, and delivering higher education here in Coventry. I'm also a bit of a beer snob, uh, which I'm okay with, and... I am also terrible at DIY, but I'm learning. But the thing is, if you look through my grades, you wouldn't see any of that story. Now, later on, you're going to hear that I'm, I'm all for assessment and, and grades, don't get me wrong, but I just think they can't tell the whole picture. Let me tell you how I know. So, I'm sat. In a, in a room, a big room, on the edge of a U-shaped table, surrounded by and looking at a number of people I do not know. And frankly, uh, I'm a bit nervous. This is the first time I've been invited to such a meeting, and uh, I'm, I'm feeling underqualified and a bit overwhelmed. Honoured, but overwhelmed. That day, we have one very simple task to do. We have to decide the fate of every single student that has passed through that academic institution that academic year. <laughs> easy, right? But here's the thing. There's actually a really easy metric for that. Do you have the grades? <laughs> or do you not? So they pass me this old laptop, which takes an absolute age to turn on, and they point me in the direction of one very large PDF crammed full of student data. And we scroll through hundreds of students, and I don't think twice because the numbers work, until we come to one particular student. Let's call them student number 1234. Uh, student 1234 has done really badly. I mean really badly. Their attendance is terrible. Their grades are even worse. And so I suppose that makes it easy, right? No grades, no continuation. Next. But what struck me about student 1234 was what else the record was telling me. If you'd scrolled up, you would have seen that, yes, they did pretty badly, but this was their second attempt at that year at university. Well, what had happened in their first year? Well, I looked at their first year, and they'd started pretty, pretty averagely, pretty normally. Attendance was fine, grades were fine, until about two-thirds of the way through the year when something happened. And their attendance dropped, and thus their grades dropped, and they needed to repeat the year. What happened to student one, two, three, four? Well, I don't know. Because a grade can't tell the whole story. I hope they're okay. Imagine for a second that everyone could have access to great Education, education that did understand the whole story. 
An education that focused on developing the person, not only the grade. A person-centered education. Now, I should pay credit to my friends and colleagues in education that work this out every day in their own context. But the problem is, the rest of us can't seem to shake this importance of grades, right? Isn't it funny that when we think about education or educational achievement, what we mean is grades. And actually, if you look at any report about education, or maybe even its advertising, its emphasis is on exactly that. But it's just one part. It's just one part. But before I sound like I'm campaigning to get rid of assessment and, and education, it, it, within education, uh, I should say that I'm all for assessment. I get it. I know why it's there. I know that it exists, and, and I agree with all of the educational processes around it. I just think they're markers. Single points in time that illustrate a particular demonstration of a particular task. Now, that demonstration offers a whole load of information. Information that will help you grow, develop, continue to learn, and maybe even obtain the, the goal you have set for yourself. But it's not the be-all and end-all. You know, uh, our language, though, it can suggest otherwise, right? Meet Jack. He's an A-star student. Or perhaps... Gemma, she's, uh, she's failing in school. Perhaps from my own life, I am very disappointed at Matthew's effort on the academic side of the course. Well, my personal favorite, actually, as I was re researching this, uh, prior to being entered into formal examinations, it will be a requirement that the examining body is made aware of Matthew's particular difficulties with literacy. Helpful. Now, I know we're a million years away from my experience of school, but my point is not actually the intent of my teachers, nor how long it took me to shake the definition of one who struggles with literacy. But this emphasis on one particular element of the educational journey has consequences. You've probably read about it. Chronic anxiety. Students terrified of the learning experience and issues rising to the surface, most commonly at assessment crunch points. But should a grade really be the whole story? Do you know, I recently discovered quite a significant biological truth I wish to share with you. I say recently, I've known this for a long time actually, but are you ready? Because this piece of information is going to change your life. Are you ready? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I am me. I know, right? Welcome to class. And you are you. It turns out there is no one like me and there is no one like you. We are all different. I know different things to you. You like different things to me. We all learn in different ways. It turns out we're all individuals. Turns out we all have our own stories. Now, this is significant. In 1993, K. Anders Ericsson, a Swedish psychologist, led a team of researchers investigating what it meant to become an expert in something. They concluded that although group-based environments are of some use, focusing on individualized support was the most beneficial. An individualized approach. In 1999, Sir Ken Robinson led a team of people that wrote a report for the UK government entitled All Our Futures, outlining a load of changes they thought we needed to make to the educational sector in the UK. One of the things they concluded was we need a system of education that recognizes the capacity for the individual and provides the necessary environment for that to be realized. A person-centered approach. We, with the research continues today, we already know that whether the engagement, whether the measure rather is grades or engagement or employability or confidence, 
Engaging the whole person and developing them as a whole person yields the best results. So, what can we do? Well, I can tell you about many a different teaching method or teaching structure, and if you're interested in that kind of thing and you're here today, please come and talk to me. If you're watching, please connect with me. But at the heart of it, it's really simple. People are more important than grades. You know, as I flicked through Instagram yesterday uh, in an attempt to unwind, I came across a number of posts by past students of mine, and something struck me. I knew all of these people. I knew them. I had laughed with them, I'd cried with and in front of some of them, I'd walked both figuratively and literally with some of them, I had taught a load of them, I'd learnt a load from them, I'd celebrated with them, I'd mourned with some of them. I knew them. I, and I had seen them grow into people I knew and respected. People like Josh. Now, if you ever get a chance to hang out with Josh, you need to hang out with Josh. Josh is amazing. I love Josh. Josh became a student of mine a number of years ago, and by all accounts, he met the anxiety statistics I was sort of talking about earlier. But here's the thing. Together, Josh and I, we walk through his experience of education. Together, we help frame assessment in a healthy way. We help figure out what assessment really says what it's really there for, what it actually says about him and where his true value really lies. Through getting to know Josh, we've discovered that community and relationship are the cornerstones of a successful educational environment. But there's a bonus. Getting to know your students, delivering stuff through understanding your students actually has benefit for their grades. It turns out that doing that and getting to know Josh has built his confidence, yes, but it's built his ability to write academically, get under the skin of a topic, develop his performance skills, his compositional skills, his ability to present and communicate, and ultimately all of that has led to him successfully graduating. Through getting to know Josh, we've discovered a, a near 0% dropout rate and a near 100% graduation rate. You know, it turns out that grades are just a chapter in the story of recognizing the whole person. Because if a grade can't tell the whole story, we need a system of education that goes out and finds the rest out. Because education should be about more than just grades. It should be about who you are. Thank you.